Introducing SJ Cam SJ7 Star, SJ Cam's highest performance solution to the advancing video standards. There is plenty on offer, so let's see how the camera meets the expectations. SJ7 Star, the camera that takes SJ Cam to the 4K territory. Along with the high resolution, the camera offers the regular array of features that is characteristic of SJ Cam cameras. So let's begin with the packaging. From the surface, the packaging has the familiar color theme with the concealed security check sticker. This helps the purchaser to check the received item for authenticity. In the box, we have a whole range of accessories and SJ Cam provides more online if you need it. The accessories themselves are of decent quality as well. The camera comes in the waterproof housing and the waterproof housing comes with two different kinds of back cover, one for deep diving and the other for touchscreen operation at shallow depths. Moving on to the camera itself, there is much to be said about the construction of the SJ7. In the previous review, I said that the SJ6 was built well. This takes it to another level. To say that the body shell is constructed out of aluminum is not the full story. The way it is made, it kind of reminds me of an iPhone 5. The edges are chamfered, the glass surface of the display looks at home where it is. The front plastic has a rubberized feel to it and the overall quality of the camera, the finishing and all, is indeed at a premium level. Around the camera, the layout is rather simple. On the side, we have the micro SD slot, mini USB port, micro HDMI port and little holes for mic. At the front, we have the power and setting buttons and two LED indicators. At the top, we have the action button and the grill for the speaker. All the buttons have a decent tactile feedback as well. The battery compartment lid is made of plastic but it opens using a metal hinge and is also spring loaded. The touchscreen works and the mini system is designed to take advantage of it. Though I personally do not think it is more useful than the traditional button driven menu system. The waterproof case allows the camera to be mounted on different surfaces or on things and as the name suggests is waterproof making it capable of underwater filming. Before I move on to the performance of the camera let's have a look at the internal components. The sensor is a good old Sony IMX117 12 megapixel sensor. It's 7.81 millimeter with pixel size of 1.55 nanometers. Fun fact, it was the same sensor that was used in a GoPro Hero 3. The CPU used is a Umbrella A12S system on chip or SOC. It is a chip made by one of the well-known names of the industry. The specs sheet mentions a lot of good things and this time to the credit of SJ Cam, they managed to utilize majority of the capabilities of both the sensor and the processor. The downside is that the A12S does not encode in H.265, which would have been great for the 4K video and it does not support USB 3, which also would have been great for transferring large files. But I do not wish to pop the excitement, the sensor and the chip together provides good results. as we shall see soon. Quick disclaimer, all the tests performed were with the firmware version of 1.02. Some of the features and attributes should change with the newer firmware updates. With regards to the wireless capabilities, the SJ Cam app allows for easier operation of the camera from your phone or tablet etc. And all the settings are tad a bit easier to work with as well. Only difficulty I have faced is that at times the app did not want to connect to the camera. The wireless remote that is sold separately also works flawlessly. Had to pair once and that was it. These remotes are water resistant as well. And now the main event. Before I start, please note that the video samples has been uploaded to YouTube where it gets recompressed so there will be quality loss. Video quality. Well, the short answer is the video quality is good. And the long answer is starting from the regular full HD at 60 FPS by most part as we can see the video quality is crisp and vibrant some may say the saturation is a bit strong my opinion about it is 
it's right for the product. A DSLR will do all the neutral and faithful color reproduction. There appears to be a deliberate tuning of image profile in this manner and I like it. Going from dark to bright area, the transition by most part is good. At the moment, the gyro feature only works up to 180p at 60fps, which is unsatisfactory. The 2K and 4K modes are left without stabilization. The stabilization itself is very good when applicable. Moving on to high resolution, 4K. Finally, we have the genuine 4K or UHD resolution from SJCAM. We have 3840 times 2160 at 30 FPS running at average of 65 Mbps. 65 Mbps for 4K is not a lot, it should be at least twice as much, but it is enough to bring about a usable result. This is an example scene. The details on the bridge, motion of the water and flight of the birds, the colors, the ship leaving the port is Queen Victoria, all in the setting sun. People relaxed and enjoying themselves. I love this shot. It captures the spirit of our city. The key to all this is that the Umbrella chip is able to process data at higher rate than any other camera from SJ Cam in the past. Meaning, the Full HD video at 60fps is averaging 45mbps, where with the previous models, the max used to be around 32mbps for the same video setting. So, comparing apples to apples, the SJ7's video quality is better not just because of the sensor but because of the processor as well. There are two other modes that I found myself using and that is the Full HD at 120fps which has decent sharpness but also allows for slow motion and then there is the 240fps at 720p. Oh yes, this is what I've been waiting for, sweet. 4K in lower light however suffers a bit. But in same condition, in lower resolution it does not. On the subject of lighting, the way the camera handles light variation in the same shot is to be noted. For example here, there are lots of sun on some places and on the shadow areas things are nice and clear as well. The colors are still represented in the dark and overexposed areas. So that is my long answer. Now it's time for some pros and cons. I'll go with cons first. Software at the moment is in need of updating and that is something that SJCAM has informed me about that they have a list of identified items in the software that will be added or improved in the upcoming revisions. There are too many resolutions to select from. Understandably, this will net in people with specific needs, but the mass majority of people will only be using a few out of this long list. The bigger issue is that the review unit defaults to 720p at 24fps every time the camera shuts. It's a software issue that I hope they will fix it. It's annoying to go into the menu every time I start the camera. There is a heating issue that apparently they are working to resolve via software update, though I have doubts it will improve too much. The tripod mount is missing. This was something that was present in the SJ6 and was incredibly handy. Why give something only to take it away later? The battery has been changed again. Although it looked very much like that of the SJ6, it is different. If you do not have any other SJCAM cameras, this does not really matter. The provided frame did not fit the camera at all. This may have been an oversight in the review unit, but I can only comment on what is at hand. Gyro in high resolutions are missing, something that the previous models could do easily. USB 2 and mini USB at that. I can understand that the processor does not support it, but mini USB is less in use than micro. By the way, SJCAM, if you are listening, the Umbrella H2 chip, 
would have taken care of the USB 3 compatibility and also would have allowed the H.265 encoding. SJ7V2 Superstar perhaps? Without jacking up the price of course. Now the pros. The build quality, hands down the first positive that I need to mention. 4K capability is indeed a step forward. Battery life, by most part, has been very good. I could easily do a day trip with mixed use without running flat. Now the next point has more to do with the brand. SGCAM is serious about their reputation and their website is set up to promote communication with staff or with other users. So far, all the SJCAM cameras that I have are still alive. Some of them are way past their warranty. So in conclusion, most of the negatives that I mentioned are little annoyances and a lot of them are to be corrected with software updates anyway. There is not much in the way of deal breaker. It's a little camera that I found myself carrying in my pocket with the rubber lens cover they provided. Certainly it will not replace a DSLR. It's not meant to, but it can certainly complement one. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. What you liked or disliked about this video, please make sure to leave a note on the comment section below. And also please make sure to subscribe in order to stay updated with our latest upcoming videos. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.